friends, it's Angie Lofton with Andrew and Friends, and today I wanted to talk specifically to nannies about uh, working with children with special needs. I kind of have a unique perspective on this because I do work as a nanny, as a private tutor, and also uh, I have a child with special needs who's disabled, uh, autism spectrum uh, issues as well as he uses a wheelchair. So I kind of wanted to just give you some ideas and, and, and tips for working with kids with special needs, whether it's a physical disability or uh, more of an autism spectrum, ADD, uh, ADHD sort of uh, sensory problems. So uh, I've noticed, and the reason I'm doing this post is I've noticed that there's a lot of jobs out there uh, for families, families are requesting people, young nannies, uh, or, or anyone, <laughs> I'm not a young nanny, uh, to work with kids with special needs. And a lot of those jobs go unfilled. So I just wanted to take a minute to give you some uh, some empowerment for yourself. If that's a job that uh, you know, you've know you turned down in the past or a job that you've kind of been thinking about that you think, oh, I may not be patient enough or I may not you know, have what it takes to um, help out this family or be with this family. I just wanted to give you some encouragement that, uh, you know, there's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of advice. There's a lot of uh, tips and tricks, but I wanted to speak specifically to uh, the nanny groups uh, about some really proactive and, and uh, quick ideas that you can employ on your next uh, visit or your next uh job. So the first one, and I think we all know this is nannies uh, who work with babies, especially, you know, narrate everything. And sometimes that feels weird with kids with, that are a little older, eight, nine, 10, but still you want to narrate everything you're doing, especially if they are, um, have a physical disability or uh, autism spectrum, because uh, they, they need to know what's happening. Sometimes it, we just sort of do, and we don't tell them or set expectations of what um, you know, we're going to help them put on their mittens. We're going to uh, help them get their shoes on. We're going to let them help us make a meal, you know, make sandwiches or whatever. Just narrate, narrate, narrate everything that you're doing uh, and, and involve them. Ask questions, even if they don't answer, even if they can't answer, uh, you know, go ahead and just talk to them. The verbal feedback that they get and the uh, oral sort of processing and auditory processing feedback that they get uh, is there. And so it's important that, you know, you, you narrate everything that you are doing with them. Another thing that uh, a lot of us uh, who are teachers use uh, is explaining their transitions. Uh, I usually like with my son and with my students, I like to begin transitioning as soon as we start an activity. Go ahead and give them two or three uh, things down the line, events or activities down the line that you're going to be uh, working on with them. So for example, um, hey guys, let's read some books uh, after you finish your lunch. That would be great. So let's finish up our lunch and then we'll read some books. And then maybe later we'll take the dog out for a walk. You know, just sort of give them some uh, parameters of what uh, to expect, some ex setting expectations. So, th so through that, just uh, start managing your transition from, okay, it's lunchtime. Hey, we're going to all come to the couch in five minutes or whatever, sort of start talking about that before they've even finished the current activity as they're moving through the activity. And again, it's sort of narrating, but also just preparing them for anything that's going to be next, one or two, depending on the age of the child, one or two or three steps down the road. So um, just preparing them as opposed to just, okay, we're stopping this now and we're moving uh, to the car, you know, or whatever it is. Just, just really think that they need to be able to process uh, the change before the change happens, way before the change happens in a lot of cases. Uh, another thing that sort of goes with uh, narrating and trans transitions are uh, it, conscious discipline calls it love rituals. And I think that's a really a great way uh, to say it. But I think uh, songs, rhymes, singing little songs, making animal sounds, making games out of uh out of the alphabet, out of animal sounds, kind of going around and taking turns, even if they do not respond, even if they do not give you an answer or they give you a wrong answer, you know, what does the duck say? Moo. Um, 
that's okay. You know, uh, wow, the cow, the cow says moo. That's awesome. You know, just praise, praise, praise and, and do a lot of, of games and, and music. I know there's been some research done on the power of music, uh, with kids with special needs. So go ahead and, you know, even if you can't sing, I cannot sing, cannot carry a tune, but you know, I just, I'm silly and, and sing those songs and, and try to do nursery rhymes and things like that. Even if you're reading them and you don't know any of them, go ahead and, and do those with the kids and, and get them engaged. You'll, you'll be surprised at how they'll come back and be excited about that. Uh, another great idea is, and this is of course I think is a little with older, slightly older kiddos, but, uh, you know, give them or offer them a task. Hey, um, I'm going to, clean up this mess over here. Can you bring, you know, can you tear off a paper towel or can you help me clean up, you know, this game that we've been playing, you know, let's you and, and make it task specific. Hey, you get the red blocks. I'll get the yellow blocks or, or, uh, you know, I'll pick up the, uh, balls and you can, you know, pick up the dog toys or whatever, <laughs> whatever, uh, needs to be picked up, but make it, make it task specific. Give them very specific directions where they're not looking around the whole room of, wow, I've got to clean up the whole room. No, I'm only looking for, you know, the Hot Wheels cars, or I'm only looking for the Barbies or whatever. And so break that down, give them very specific, tiny tasks, and, um, they'll, and then they'll feel, you know, like they uh, contributed and participated. And then after that, or really with anything they do, um, you know, if they followed a direction or uh, or played a game or or anything, you know, praise, praise, praise. Just and and again, not empty praise. It's not, hey, you're great, awesome. I mean, sure, that's better than nothing. But you know, specifically, wow, I really like how you followed directions. I really like how you uh, picked up the toys when I asked you to. That's amazing. You're a great listener. You give them very specific. Uh, points that you that that you've noticed about them, and that can go through anything. I mean, some days there's not a lot that you can, you know, feel like you can praise because you know they're having a bad day or you're having a bad day, and that's okay. So, you know, wow, I like how you told me that you didn't like your bath, you know, <laughs> whatever. So, I mean, I'm stretching for some of these things, but you know what I'm saying. Um, Another uh, really great tip is, uh, and it kind of goes back to transitions, go ahead and give them a schedule. I have had students who just push back, push, push, push back on, uh, on transitions or on doing anything. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But if you write down a schedule, a dry erase board, a little post-it note, you know, make a, make a fun schedule of, and, and allow them to help you check off, okay, we've made lunch, we've had lunch. We've taken the dog for a walk. We've read books. We've played games. Uh, we had TV time, um, which leads me into uh, definitely factor in rewards in there. And and uh, depending on the age of the child, you want to factor in, uh, you know, something that they like to do. And it doesn't need to be, okay, now they get two hours of, of a movie. You know, like every maybe two or three things that they do you know, okay, we'll read a book or you can have five minutes of iPad time or 10 or whatever, depending on their age, or, or we can play a game together or you can, uh, you know, if you, after your nap, you know, if you've done your nap and your lunch and your walk and your books, then you can choose an activity and, and help them choose. Sometimes they'll know exactly what they want to choose. And sometimes you'll need to help them, um, make a healthier, good choice. So, and sometimes, you know, the choice might be a, you know, have a snack or have a treat or something like that. So just, you know, work with, um, what the family, uh, expects of you and of their children. And then also, uh, you know, what, whatever works in with your schedule. So, uh, I am going to post, uh, specifics about each of these, uh, tips, but I just wanted to sort of get them out there for you guys, uh, nanny specifically. And I just wanted to encourage you that, you know, even if you think you're not patient or you, uh, have no business working with kids, um, with special needs, just think about it. And if you have any questions, please send us an email. Uh, if I can't help you, I will get you in touch with somebody who can, but, uh, look forward to hearing from you and have a great day and a wonderful 2020. Thanks. Bye.